14.2. I think you're going to have a real easy time with 14.2. We learned about the graph of the log function on Friday, and we've been graphing transformations of parent functions all year long. So all we're doing is we're putting those two things together. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be graphing transformations of log functions. And uh, remember, if I, if I, I'm going to come up here in this upper right hand corner. If I just tell you to graph something like the natural log of X, something like that, that's our parent function. First of all, what base is this? No. This is the same as log base what? E. E is called the natural base. It's 2.7. So when we say ln of X, that's our parent function um, for all growth. This is logarithmic growth. They're all going to look the same if their base is greater than one, but it just depends on how steep they are. We're not going to get into how steep they are compared to each other. We'll say that for pre-cal. But right now, I want you to know that the natural log of X is the one that we use going forward. It's our parent function. But it looks the same as log base 10 of X. Here's, what, here's the, the two main features you need to know. There's a vertical asymptote at X equals zero, which is the Y axis. And there's an x-intercept at 1, 0, and the function is monotonic increasing, and it starts to taper off very, very quickly, okay? Now, it looks like it flattens out. If you were to graph this on the calculator, it would look like there's a horizontal asymptote as well, but there's not. It does go up very, very, very slowly, and the further out you go, the more slowly it goes up, but it does go up forever to infinity, okay? And then over here, as you approach 0, it goes down to negative infinity. So this is your parent function right here, all right? If it were log base 10, the only difference, it would be less steep, okay? And just to review that, if I just write y equals log of x, what base is that? That's base 10, okay? That's implied to be base 10. That's the common base. So this is your natural log. We call it the natural log, ln. And then over here, we have the common log, base 10. Those are the two that your calculator can handle directly. All right, so just to review from Friday, uh, the log function is really nothing more than the reflection across the line y equals x from the exponential function. Let's go ahead and draw the features, though, so we have it right here. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and it passes through the point 1, 0. So if you want to highlight this one so that we know we're looking at the log function, there you go. All right. Um, What's the, let's just, we know the domain of the, and all that stuff for the exponential. Let's just fill this in again. What's the domain for a log function of the form log base b of x? I'm going to put b greater than 1. I'm going to add that right there. If the base is greater than 1, it's logarithmic growth, just like for exponential. What was the domain? Well, x is greater than not 1, but where's the vertical asymptote? 0. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So it's the set of all x such that x is greater than 0. You can't take the log of 0, and you can't take the log of a negative number. What's the range? All real numbers, okay? So remember, that's the flipped version of what the exponential was. The exponential had a domain of all real numbers and a range greater than 0. Now, for the log, the domain is greater than 0, and the range is all real numbers. We have a, I'm going to put v right here, or vertical. We have a vertical asymptote at where? x equals 0, also known as the y-axis, and the reference point is what? 1 comma 0. That's the x-intercept. All right. If you want to add this, you can say this is the y-axis, and if you want to add this, this is the y-intercept. I'm sorry, not the y-intercept, the x-intercept. My bad, I almost gave you the wrong info. Y'all would have caught it. Okay? But this is really, this is really what I want you to be able to remember, okay? When we say log function, we have vertical asymptote, 1, 0, increasing when the base is bigger than 1. When the base is E, we call it LN. When the base is 10, we call it common. All right? Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the standard transformation form then. For log functions, here's what the transformation form is going to be. We have an A in the front. Guess what A is going to do? That's going to vertical stretch or vertical compress. Okay? And it could also be an x-axis reflection, right? If it's negative, yeah. it does two things, if negative. And that's the same for any function. It does what the log function does too. B is the base. You're going to be given the base. 
you're going to be given the base. And then X minus C, that's your horizontal shift. That's your left whatever, right whatever. And then your D, again, is your vertical shift. Now, for the horizontal shift, just like before, it's the opposite of what it looks like. Now, there's something very, very important about the X minus C. Remember, over here, for an exponential, the plus D meant that your horizontal asymptote was at Y equals D. Remember that for exponential? Whatever we moved up and down, that was your new horizontal asymptote. Well, guess what? Your X minus C, this is important your vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals c, okay? Your vertical asymptote is at x equals c because it starts at zero as well. So once you know where the vertical asymptote goes, if the whole graph moves to the right five units, your vertical asymptote is at x equals five. If the whole graph moves left three units, your vertical asymptote is at x equals negative three. Got it? If you know where the vertical asymptote is and you know if it's increasing on the left right or decreasing if we reflect it, you'll have what the shape is, all right? So let's try out example one. Um, it says to describe the transformation. we got two log base three of x minus five plus three. First of all, we're looking at our parent function. It's logarithmic growth, okay? So the parent function is going to look like this. That's what you think of. This is your parent function, okay? you got a vertical asymptote and one zero. There's your, that's what you're thinking when you see log base three. Any growth function is going to have the same shape. All right, let's describe the transformations from left to right. What does the two do? Vertical stretch by a factor of two. We don't really show that, do we? But it's going to make it a little bit steeper. Okay, what does the minus five do? Right five. Now, as soon as I say right five, you know what I'm thinking in my head? I'm thinking there's a vertical asymptote now at x equals what? Positive five, yeah. It's going to ask me for that down here. I'll go ahead and say VA at X equals 5. That goes right away when you think about the horizontal shift. It should be like in the same mental breath. And then the plus 3 moves it up 3. Now, that's not going to be as significant for us because the range is all real numbers. So if we move it up or down in amount, it doesn't really matter. But the horizontal shift and any reflection that we have is going to be the two most important. Okay. Now, let's think about the, where the reference point goes. I'm going to write out the original reference point, and I'm going to draw an arrow. We do the reference point the exact same way we've been doing the reference point for all other functions, okay? If I move the one right five units, where is it now? It's at six. Yes, it went right five. What happens with the zero? Well, the zero gets two things multiplied by it, right? It gets two things. This is the y value. This affects the y value. So you have to multiply first, and then you got to add three. What's zero times two? Zero. What's zero plus three? Three. The exact same way we've been doing it for every other function. Okay, so that moves to six, three. Now, when you're sketching the graph, the first thing you graph, the first thing you graph is the vertical asymptote. So you come over here to one, two, three, four, five. You label it as five. And then you can either switch to your dotted line or you could just draw a dotted line. For me, it's just faster to draw it. And then does the graph live to the left of that or to the right of that? It lives to the right of it. The only time it's going to live to the left of it is if you have a negative value in front of the X. And I don't think y'all are even going to see those because your standard transformation form doesn't have a a value to do that. So it lives to the right. So then we go to the point six, three, six, one, two, three. And now we just make sure we pass that point. So we draw it coming from negative infinity. And then as soon as you hit that point, I almost missed it. You turn the corner and you just go off to the side of the graph like that. And that's it. There's your graph. So the two things we're looking for, the vertical asymptote, which you always draw first, because it's literally a guideline, and then your, your reference point, the old x-intercept. All right, let's, let's talk about this for a little bit, just a couple things. What's the domain of this function? X is greater than 5. Yeah, it's always going to be to the right of the vertical asymptote unless we reflect it across the y-axis, which I just told you we're probably not going to have. So it's everything to the right of the vertical asymptote. And what's the range? 
all real numbers. That'll never change. That'll never change. Until next year when we learn to do an absolute value transformation. I keep talking about all the things we do next year. Are y'all excited about next year? Is y'all taking pre-cal or double dual? It's going to be exciting. All right. Um, any questions on example one? <laughs> what comes after one? Example three. But you know what comes in between one and three? Two. Uh -huh. Let's do example two. The function y equals log of x. Hey, it's missing a base, isn't it? If it's missing a base, what is it implied to be? 10. All right, it's the common log. So f of x is log base 10. It's stretched vertically. No, it's compressed, sorry. Vertically compressed by a factor of 3. What's the new function? Okay, so let's call it g of x. First of all, if we're vertically compressing it by a factor of 3, what number do we put where? A one-third where? Out front, in the middle? Out front, one-third. Okay, good. Um, and then transformed right. So we're not reflecting it, so it's just a one-third. And now we put log, and now we're on the inside. It's moved right two, so is that x plus or minus two? Minus two. And then up seven would be plus seven. That's it. That was so hard. Hey, what's the domain of this function? What's the domain of g? Instead of all x, that's that x is what? Greater than 7? Greater than 2. Greater than 2 because there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. It was at 0. We moved it right 2, so now it's everything to the right of 2. And what's the range? It's still all real numbers. Yeah. The domain is everything to the right of the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is affected by the horizontal shift. Everyone got it? Okay, we could do that without graphing it, can't we? We can answer those questions without graphing it. All right, example three. The log function with the base seven is reflected across the x-axis. So let's give it a name. Let's call it f of x. And if it's reflected across the x-axis, what goes in the front? A negative. And then there's no vertical stretch or compression, so we go straight to log base what? Seven. All right, and now we're on the inside. It's translated right 9, so we all know that that's x minus 9, don't we? And then finally on the outside, it's moved up 3 units. That's plus 3. Now, let's do a quick sketch of this. Well, let's answer the questions, and then we'll sketch it. I want you to be able to answer the questions without having to sketch it. What's the domain? Instead of all x, such that x is greater than 9. Now, it says in interval notation. I just wrote it in set notation, didn't I? So let's write it in interval notation. About 90% of y'all are putting x epsilon. Thank you. I haven't counted off on tests yet if you didn't put x epsilon. You either put the set of all x, such that x is greater than 9, which is set notation, or in interval notation, you got to put x epsilon parentheses 9 to infinity. This is interval. If you do interval notation, you need x epsilon. Um, so let's remove the set notation from here to here. And we're good. And then what's the range in interval notation? Just to remember, what did we do? It was x epsilon negative infinity to infinity. But, of course, I, always, I, I also take all real numbers. And then set notation, it's a set of all x such that x is an element of the real numbers. Oh, it should be what? It's range, yeah. See, that's why it's important to have your variable there. Why, why, why? I ask myself that every day. Thank you, Harley. All right, now, to quickly sketch the graph, to quickly sketch the graph, there's the x and y axis. It started as a vertical asymptote at zero, but now it moved right nine units. So I'm going to draw my vertical asymptote at nine. Let's track. Let's track the. Uh, let's track the reference point. Where did the one go? On the reference point, it went right nine. So now it's at what? Ten. And where did the y value go? It was at zero. Zero times negative one is zero. Zero plus three is three. So it's at ten comma three. Now, do we draw an increasing function or a decreasing function? What creasing? Decreasing. 
because the negative reflects it across the x-axis before we move it, and now it looks like this. It's a decreasing function. But we can still get the domain and range and even the equation of the vertical asymptote just by knowing what the transformations do. Okay, But it is a decreasing function. Good to know. All right, nothing hard so far, right? We're just kind of doing the same thing we did with other functions, just with log functions. All right, now we're going to go ahead and write an equation in this form right here. Um, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. We need to know A, we need to know C, we need to know D, and we need to know the base. So I think it's going to tell us what base to use. Yeah, it says to use the natural base E. So I'm going to use what? How do I write the natural base? Log base E of X we write as what? LN of X. Yeah, and again, I write it in cursive so it doesn't look like 1N. All right, so the original function is in black. This is, uh, this is Y equals the natural log of X. Now, the way that this, these points are is it's supposed to show you the correspondence. This point moves to there, and this point moves to there. Okay? So from the graph, what's the first thing that probably jumps out at you that you can get from the graph of the new function in red? The asymptote. That jumps out at me, too. We have a VA at X equals negative 4. So to write my equation, first I'm going to give it a name, f of x. I'm going to leave a little space. I'm going to put the natural log of, it's got to be what? x plus or minus 4. It's got to be plus 4. Very good. Opposite, right? If you have a vertical asymptote at negative 4, you got to do plus 4. Okay, that takes care of that. The next thing that was probably easy to get is the, uh, you can get the d value if you want. Okay, because you look at this original value on the x-axis, and it went up how much? It went up two units. So you can actually say plus two. Now, how do you get the a value? Here's, here's the easy way to get the a value. I think before I told you to call it a, and then I said to plug in an ordered pair and then solve for a. You could do it that way. But I'm going to show you another way to do it here that's pretty easy. Because these two points correspond with each other, and this only works because they correspond with each other. All you got to do is notice that the original, the original vertical difference between this one and this one was one. That was the original vertical difference between them. See that? What's the new vertical distance between them? It's three, yes? So what do I need to multiply one by to get from one to three? Three, okay? So that difference is your A value. That's the easy way to do it. But again, that doesn't always work. It only works if you know that those two points were the original points that were moved. If they're different points, then you can't tell the A value unless you plug in. But that's how these problems are designed, so that you know those two points are corresponding. Okay? So you could basically say, this: if this was originally 1, 1 times A equals 3, and you get A equals 3. Okay? And there's the equation. Looks good. And that's the whole lesson. Boy, that didn't take long at all. 14.2. Any questions on 14.2? All right, let's review something real quickly before we move on. Log base 4 of 16 is equal to what? 2. Very good. And the reason is because 4 to the second power is 16. Yeah. Log base 3 of 1 over 27 is equal to what? Three? Is that what you said? Nine? Well, what, what, that would be 3 to the 9 equals 1 over 27. Is that right? It's got to be negative because it's a fraction, right? So now just three, three to what power is twenty-seven? Three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. So it's negative three. Why is it negative three? Because three to the negative third power is one over three to the third power, which is one over twenty-seven. Got it? And let's do one more. What's log base five of the um, of the square root of twenty-five?
In other words, five to what power is the square root of twenty-five? Oh, sorry. I don't. I, let's not do the square root of twenty-five. Let's do the cube root of twenty-five. Yeah. Otherwise, it makes it too easy. Remember this property from last time? Log base b of b to the x is just x, right? So if I can write the argument here as a power of the base 5, I'll know the answer, right? That's why this works here, right? This is really log base 4 of 4 squared. That's 16, so that's 2. This is log base 3 of 3 to the negative third, so that's why it's negative 3. Let's see if we can write the square root of 25, cube root of 25 as a power of 5. First of all, that's going to be 25 to the what power if I get rid of the cube root? One third, good. Now I can write 25 as a power of 5. It's 5 what? It's 5 squared, isn't it? Now what do I do when I raise the power to a power? I what multiply? Multiply. So it becomes log base 5 of 5 to the 2 thirds. And guess what the answer is now? 2 thirds. A log is nothing more than an exponent to which you must raise a base to get a particular value called the argument. Okay. That's just a quick review from Friday. All right. Any any other comments or questions on today or logs in general? Logs aren't bad, right? You don't hate logs yet. Good. I hope it keeps up. Okay. You got the rest of the period to work on your homework assignment. Uh, if one of y'all owes me a test and you want to try and start it, Anera, we can maybe do that. I don't care. <laughs>